All right, everybody. Uh, this is our continuation of the passive voice. I'm going to review a little bit of what we went over yesterday, and I'm going to show you the new forms of imperfect and future tense of first and second conjugations. Uh, I'm not really going to go into third and fourth conjugations, I don't think. Um, that might be another kind of time. Um, but we are going to go over the imperfect and future first person or first conjugation and second conjugation, all right? So to review of what the passive voice is, the passive voice, let's kind of compare it with the active voice. There are two voices in English and Latin. One is the active voice, one is the passive voice. Voice basically tells you who's doing the action, right, um, of the sentence, of the verb. In active voice, the subject performs the active of the verb, the action of the verb. In passive voice, the subject receives the action of the verb. So it kind of flip flops the direct object pretty much as the as the subject uh, in a passive voice sentence as opposed to an active voice sentence. So we'll see. We went over that before, so hopefully it made more sense. Um, from what I saw in the last exercise, it looked like it did. So. To review what the forms are, how can you tell what they are in the uh, present active, um, we have our first conjugation verb here. We have laudo, laudare, laudavi, laudatum. First thing you have to do is go to the second principal part, the A-R-E. Uh, you take off the R-E on that and you have your stem. You write the stem all the way through, as you see here. Now this first person singular would be a lauda and then you would add your endings, present active endings, which would be this, O, S, T, must sometimes M in certain cases. Now remember that if it's an A, O, it would be la da O, and that sounds terrible to the Latin, to the Romans. Um, and so they decided to drop the A and just put the O. Uh, so we have laudo, and that one's, that's it. You just add the O to it, and you're done. The other ones, you add the endings to. So when you do that, we have O-S-T mustisent. So there you go. Laudas, laudat, laudamus, laudatus, laudant. That's the present active. Again, if you, that does not look familiar to you, make sure you go back and review um, things that we have learned before. Passive works the same way. Go to the second principal part, drop the RE, put it all the way through. Remember, the O that is attached to it, it drops the A out. So you have laudo, and then you add your passive endings, which are aris tour, mer, mini, and tour. We talked about those last time. So you add those to there, and we have lador, ladaris, ladator, ladamor, ladamini, ladator. That is the present passive. We looked at the and everything like that. How you translate this? You put a form of to be, present form of to be if it's present, so is praised, this is what laudo means, praise, is praised, am praised, are praised, any of those will work. They are present, the form of to be is present, is, am, are, but the, what makes it passive is the verb is in the past tense, right? Loved, praised, advised, something like that. Um, so, in the second, it works the same way. Second conjugation, we have wideo, widere, widi, wisum. Second principal part, drop off the re. There's your stem. Um, remember that this doesn't drop, so we have wideo um, as normal. So we have wide as the stem, as you can see here, and then we just add our endings. So wideo, wideis, wideit. Or that actually. With Davis, with Datus, with Dent. Okay? And that is all you have to do for a second conjugation present. Same thing that you do in the first. Again, review if you need it. So it works the same exact way for a second conjugation in the passive voice. You go to the second principal part, drop the RE, there's your stem. The first principal, uh, first person singular has that O attached to it. Go to our endings which are aris, tur, mer, mini, intur, and you add those and you're done. So we have widor, wideris, widetor, widemor, widemini, widentor. Okay? Same exact thing they did with the first conjugation.
In terms of imperfect, in the active voice, first and second conjugations do the same thing. Second principal part, drop off the RE, there's your stem. If it's imperfect tense, you put a BA in it. So there's the BA all the way through, and then you add your endings. So in this case, we use our M instead of the O. So we have la da bomb, la da boss, la da bop, la da bomb, la da bop, la da bop. Those are the active endings, so that's why these are active. Okay? Second conjugation does the same thing. If you remember, imperfect active is translated as was praising, right? Uh, that's the active translation, so let's talk about the passive one. Again, if this doesn't look like it makes sense, make sure you go back and review uh, the imperfect tense. So, imperfect passive, same exact thing, second principal part, drop off the RE, there's your stem. Just like imperfect active, add the BA to every single one. Then instead of adding the active endings, you add the passive endings. So, R, RIS, TOUR, MERMANY, and TOUR. LA DE BAR, LA DE BARIS, LA DE BATOUR, LA DE BAMOR, LA DE BAMANY, LA DE BANTOUR. Easy as that. Done. Um, same thing with the second conjugation. You go to the second principal part, drop the RE, and then add the BA to the stem, and then the R, R is TOUR, MERMANY, and TOUR. Same thing. Okay? Now, how do you translate this? If present tense has a is praised, right? You have the is and the are and the am. Imperfect is going to use a past tense form of to be. So was or were. And then you put the passive uh, past tense uh, verb meaning. So was praised, were praised. That's all you have to do when you translate. That's it. Future uses a bi or a be in one part. Um, so in the active voice, you have your stem, remember, got the second principal part, drop off the re, done. You add either a bi or mostly a bi or a b because the first principal part, or first person singular is not bio because it would be add another sound to it and that doesn't sound good. Loud to bo sounds terrible. So then instead they say loud to bow. Drop off the e in it or the i and it sounds good. All the rest have a bi. The third person plural changes to a bu because that nt sound will change the i if you say it really fast to a u sound. So they just change it to a u just just to make it sound like it would if you say it fast. So then you add your endings. O, S, T, must have sent. This is the active one. And how you translate it is just use the word will. Will praise. I will praise, you will praise, he, she, it will praise. Um, uh, we will praise, y'all will praise, and they will praise. Easy as that. Future passive uh, works pretty much the same way. It's a little bit different, but you have your stem, which again, you go to the second principal part, drop off the RE. Same, same, same thing as the first person singular. You don't have the I, so you have a, a, a B there, but it sounds weird. So they put the O instead of a BI. So it's going to be allowed to bore as opposed to a lot of beer. Um, this one changes. Second person singular is is a BE as opposed to a BI because a lot of beerus sounds like it's going to be a lot of bearus anyways if you say it really fast. So they change it to an E, similar to the thing that they did with the BE. And then you just add your ending. So a lot of bor, uh, bearus, bitor, bimor, bimini, buntor, and you're done. Works both of these things, active and passive, work for the first and second conjugations. Okay, so if you see anything besides a BA, but it's still a B something, think future. How to translate this, you put will be praised, will be loved, will be whatever the verb is. Okay. So, to review, um, and this is the second one. Uh, well, okay, so... Present passives to review. Amor, amar, sematur, amamor, mamani. You take the stem, you add the uh, endings, first and second conjugations to the stem. Remember, first person, the A drops out. Uh, everything else looks the same. 
Imperfects, literally the stem plus a BA plus the endings. First and second conjugation work exactly the same way. Very easy. How you translate it was loved, was seen, was heard, whatever the verb means. Just put was or were in front of it. Future stem, first and second. Add the B-O, B-E, or B-I, or B-U, depending on which uh, person it is. And then the endings. How you translate it, I will be loved, you will be loved, he, she, it will be loved, uh, the, we will be loved, they will be loved, and uh, y'all will be loved. Uh, I will be seen, uh, you will be seen, all that kind of stuff. Same kind of thing. So, part of the thing you're doing for the exercises is not only conjugating uh, into the present, future, and imperfect um, passive, but you're also going to translate very short uh, passive voice sentences. Remember that there is the ablative of agent that we talked about last time, where you have the ah or ob in front of the noun in the ablative case, because uh, that's the person that's actually doing the thing that the verb says. So here's how it works. If we have an active sentence like Cesarum, uh, or Cesarum, sorry, Cesarum monet. Monet means to advise or he advises. So he advises Caesar is the actual sentence, right? E-M should tell you third declension, accusative case, singular. So he's the direct object. Basically, you take the direct object, you switch it to the subject. So it's Kaisar, right? So Caesar, you change the verb into passive. So etor is present. So you'd say Caesar is advised, okay? And then you would have to put uh whoever, you know, we'll work on the pronoun thing. I haven't really taught that very well yet. Um, so we'll go over that later. But that's kind of how, what you do. Again, another example, urbem de le bot. Uh, it means he or it or she deletes or destroys the city. Change the direct object to the subject, herbs. The city is destroyed. You change the verb to, uh, and that's actually a, an imperfect, so it be was destroyed because of that BA, right? So the city was destroyed. And then you would put by whoever. Third one, patriam conservabit uh, means he will save the country. BI should tell you that that's future. Change it to passive. The direct object becomes the subject, the, the country or the fatherland, um, will be saved. And then you would put by him or by the man or whatever. Okay? That is how the active and passive work. Hopefully that made it a little bit easier. Um, so here's what we're going to do really quick. Here's a second conjugation verb. Um, we're going to form it into the imperfect and future tenses because you'll have to do that on your exercises. So first thing we do is go to the RE and uh, the second principle part, drop off the RE. There's our stem. For the imperfect, we take the stem plus the BA plus the endings. So we have tene bar, tene baris, tene bator, tene bamor, tene bamini, tene bantor. So aris tour, mermenian tour, BA plus the stem. Future, you take the same stem. Remember, the first one is a little bit different. So you have BOR, tene bor. Uh, then the second uh, singular is also different, it's B-E, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, and then you add your endings. So we have tenebor, tenebaris, not a B-I, but an E, tenebitor, tenebimor, tenebimini, and then this one, because of the B-I changing to a B-U, is tenebuntor. And that is how it works. So I put the assignment on Teams, I put it on OneNote, whatever one you want to do, you can do. You're changing uh, a verb into the passive, present, imperfect, and future, and then translating about three sentences I think I put on there. So that's it. Okay? Hopefully this sounded a little bit easier to do. All right? So that's it.